Welcome to module 3 of my course Genome Editing and Engineering. In this module we have been discussing about the recombination process. Today we are going to discuss about the site specific recombination. Site specific recombination encompasses a group of processes in which DNA molecules are rearranged by breaking and rejoining the strands at specific points. So, it involves excision, insertion or integration and inversion. We will be discussing how this happens in the course of our lecture. Let us uh, have a understanding of the homologous recombination versus site specific recombination. In the last lecture we discussed about the HR which utilizes long stretches of homology between partner DNA molecules for double strand break repairs. This process involves a large number of proteins with distinct biochemical activities which cooperate to carry out homologous recombination. In contrast, site specific recombination targets relatively short DNA sites with well defined sequences and usually a single protein or a pair of proteins uh, is or are involved in carrying out the catalytic steps of site specific recombination. Sometimes the site specific recombinations are aided by one or more accessory proteins in synapsing the DNA partners and assembling the chemically competent recombination complex. Uh, due to its simplicity, these systems has been utilized for bringing about targeted genetic alterations within genomes. Site specific recombination involves two sort DNA sequences or sites, which may be within the same molecule or in different molecules. A specialized recombinase enzyme recognizes the sites and then rearrange the DNA such that the left end of one side becomes joined to the right end of the other side and vice versa. In classical site specific recombination, the strand breaking and rejoining reactions are catalyzed by a recombinase and are highly conservative. It do not involve any DNA synthesis or degradation or any enzyme cofactors. Briefly, site specific recombination are a set of specialized processes that involve a reciprocal exchange between defined DNA sites and in general it requires the following. Number one, it requires two DNA partners. It requires a specialized recombination, recombination protein that is responsible for recognizing the sites and for breaking and rejoining the DNA. And thirdly, a mechanism that involves DNA breakage and reunion with conservation of the phosphodiester bond energy. Some examples of SSR or site specific recombination which meet the above criterion are the integration of bacteriophage lambda into the E. coli chromosome, the resolution of co-integrates derived from transposition of TNT related transposons and the DNA inversions responsible for flagellar phase variation in salmonella. This narrow requirement however excludes several other specialized recombination processes that have been on occasion been described as site specific uh, recombination. These will be discussed as and when uh, necessary. Some of these are VDZ recombination catalyzed by the RAG1 to proteins during the development of the immune system or immune reactions. Most DNA transposition events even when a site specific target is used uh, including integration of retroviral cDNAs and the homing of mobile introns. What is the outcome of the process of site specific recombination? You can see in this figure there is a candidate gene and then there is a uh, sequence of interest uh, and these are flanked by uh, say the candidate gene is flanked by uh, some genetic sequence 1 and 2, uh, the target sequence is flanked by some sequence 3 and 4 and if this candidate gene is to be integrated, uh, you can see there is a change in the flanking genes. The candidate gene carrying along with it the flanking gene 1 uh, to the uh, sequence site uh, which is now having 
on the right side the flanking gene uh, 4. So, this is just the schematics of the outcome of the site specific recombination. So, this however depends on the initial arrangement of the parental recombination sites and gives rise to either insertion, integration or excision. Sometimes uh, instead of this insertion there may be excision and there may also be inversion. Now, this integration results from recombination between sites on separate DNA molecules provided that at least one of the parental chromosome is uh, circular and occur with a uniquely defined orientation. For sites located on the same chromosome, the outcome is determined by their relative orientation. Site specific recombination may also lead to excision of genes. So, there is a candidate gene over here. And now, as excision has happened, you can see the gene is no longer in the scene and it has disappeared. And in the case of inversion, you can see here the gene has been uh, inverted. For sites located on the same chromosome, the outcome is determined by the relative orientation. Uh, excision results from recombination between sites in a head to tail orientation, while inversion results from exchange between inverted head to head uh, sites. So, this is one of the uh, important papers uh, which uh, was uh, published in the PNS and uh, Gates and uh, Cox reported the FLP recombinase uh, and its enzymatic activity. Enzymes which catalyze site specific recombination between two specific DNA sequences and mediate DNA integration, excision, resolution or inversion are called as site specific recombinases. These site specific recombinases which play a pivotal role in the life cycles of many microorganisms are classified into two types, tyrosine type or serine type recombinases. And this classification is based on whether a tyrosine or serine residue mediates the catalysis. They further divided uh, or subdivided into two subfamilies, uh, each based on the following criterion. The tyrosine type recombinases are subdivided by the direction of the recombination or recombination directionality, while the serine type recombinases are subdivided by the size of the protein. The tyrosine type recombinases catalyzes the formation of a holiday junction intermediate and resolution. The catalytic mechanism of serine type recombinases includes the 180 degree rotation and rejoining of cleaved substrate DNA. And you can see here the eponymous holiday junction, a model for DNA recombination intermediate uh, proposed by Dr. Robin Holiday. Uh, and this is the uh, simplified diagram where four strands of uh, DNA participate and this is the cartoon diagram of the DNA double strands. So, briefly uh, we have up till now discussed about the different type of classification of the site specific recombinases uh, broadly they fall into two types tyrosine type and the serine type. And here the three prime phosphotyrosine linkage uh, with cleave DNA and here you have the 3 prime phosphosericin linkage with uh, cleave DNA. And these tyrosine type are further subdivided into phase integrase which may be unidirectional and simple type which may be uh, bidirectional whereas the serine types are divided depending on the size like the resolve phase or inverted they may be small and the phase integrases which are very very large. And there are other uh, features which are important to these uh, recombinases. For example, the phase integrase requires the host factors IFCF and FIS and these need supercoiled uh, DNA. These do not need the HF 
and uh, the serine types particularly the small resolvases and intrigases also have some kind of directionality. They may be both uni and bidirectional and the requirements of HF uh, may vary. Uh, HIN and GIN require the SF, uh, FIS and HU. Uh, they also need supercoil DNA uh, and recombination sites in Cs. Whereas the large serine type phase integrases do not need any uh, HF host factors. All enzymes uh, recombine to target sites which are either identical or uh, distinct. Whereas for A1, uh, these sites have individual designations FRT in case of FLP recombinases, LOXV for uh, Cree recombinases. The terms ATTP and ATTB are attachment sites on the phage and bacterial part uh, uh, respectively and uh, these are valid in other cases as well. In case of A1, we have to deal with sort usual 34 base pair long sites consisting of two uh, near identical 13 base pair arms. Uh, flanking an 8 base pair spacer, the crossover region indicated by red line uh, doublets over here. So, let us look into this table to understand uh, this discussion. We have the types of various recombinases, tyrosine and serine. You have tyrosine recombination and tyrosine intrigases sericin resolvases, invertases or sericin intrigases. And these are the sources uh, bacteria, fuzz and yeast and you have the various uh, members like CRE, DRE, FLP, KD. Uh, you, you have for example, in the case of intrigases, lambda, lambda intrigases, in sericin resolvases you have gamma delta, par A, TN3 gene and so on and in certain cases they require the accessory factors already discussed earlier and some members do not and these are the recognition sites uh, in fuzz and in the bacteria uh, as uh, discussed uh, earlier. Let us first discuss about the features of tyroxine recombinases and what are the type of reactions they carry or the mechanisms involve. So, these tyrosine recombinases are found abundantly in prokaryotes, archaea and even eukaryotes and in certain families of uh, retroposons. Uh, various structural studies of these tyrosine recombinases have shown that they share a catalytic domain with recognizable sequence motifs. And the fold of the entire domain is well conserved. Although some family members such as FIMB and FIMI contain only uh, this domain, however in most the catalytic domain is preceded by a variable N terminal domain that helps binding to uh, DNA. Some such as lambda integrases have a second N terminal domain that binds different DNA sites. For instance, there are two tyrosine recombinases of unknown function whose catalytic domains are followed by putative molybdate binding domains. The catalytic domain is shared with at least two other classes of enzyme. Type 1b isomerases function as monomers to release supercoiling tension in DNA by cleaving and re-ligating just one strand of DNA, but they, they do so through a similar 3-phosphotyrosine intermediate with an almost identical active site. The second one is the telomere resolvases or pro-telomerases. They maintain the covalently close hairpin ends of the linear replicants found in certain prokaryotes and viruses. Apart from the essential catalytic tyrosine residue, most tyrosine recombinances possess seven conserved residues as listed here. ARG1, GLU-S1, 
release histidine 2 arc 2 his and trypsin uh, 3 uh, <coughs> tryptophan 3. These Roman numerals here 1, 2 and 3 uh, correspond to the 3 catalytic motifs 1, 2 and 3. The tyrosine and lysine residues serve as nucleophilic as a nucleophile and general acid catalyst respectively. The ARG1 and ARG2 residues neutralize the negative charge during the transition state and activate the sicyl phosphate by the catalytic tyrosine residue. The HIST, TRP3 and HIST2 and glue ASP1 residues stabilizes the transition state. Bacterial tyrosine type integrases contain a signature R1, H2, XS, R2, Y tetrad where X can be any residue. Now, what is the mechanism by which this recombination happen? Tyrosine type first lambda integrase which is a unidirectional tyrosine type recombinase. Let us study its mechanism first. Bacteriophages are classified into two groups, lytic and temperate phases. Once inside the host bacterial cells, lytic phases immediately propagate themselves by taking over the host cell machinery and release large number of phases by lysis of host cells. In contrast to these, the temperate phases enter either lytic or lysogenic life cycle after host cell invasion. In lysogenic cycle, the temperate phase genomes are integrated in the host bacterial chromosome at a specific site by the site specific recombination catalyzed by a phase encoded integrase during conversion to the prophase state. In the initial stage of the conversion to the lytic phase, a phase encoded excisionase catalyzes the excision of the prophase genome by cooperating with the phase integrase and the original ATTP and ATTB sequences are regenerated via site specific recombination between ATTL and ATTR. So, the integrase and the axis INS carry out opposite functions. We have discussed about the uh, ATTP and ATTB uh, sequences earlier. So, you can see this uh, location of these uh, sequences over here. Now, uh, in the case of integration, uh, you need uh, integrase and uh, excision would require uh, the integrase as well as like the axis INS and uh, these gives rise uh, to the prophase. The activities of heterobifunctional uh, tyrosine recombinases are frequently regulated at the structural level by axis INS which alter the ability of the recombinase to assemble into higher order recombinogenic uh, nucleoprotein structures. Integration of the lambda DNA. Lambda fast DNA contain an attachment sequence called ATTP as shown in this figure and the bacterial DNA contain an attachment sequence called ATTB. Fast and bacterial DNA align at the O region of the attachment sequences. During integration, INT protein induces two double strand breaks that are resolved. This lead to the integration of the fast DNA into the bacterial DNA. To switch between either lytic or lysogenic life cycle, the process as it happens is uh, reversible. For excision of the prophase phase DNA from the bacterial DNA, INT protein and GIS protein is needed and already uh, discussed earlier. The integrated fast DNA oocyte is flanked with one side from the fast and one side from the bacteria. These are called the ATTL and ATTR sites. And we can see here the genome of the fast lambda uh, which has certain sequences corresponding to the head, tail, tail tip 
and uh, tail fibers and uh, these are uh, not expressed uh, together. Uh, these are uh, some early genes and some are late genes. Accordingly, they are known as the early operon or the uh, late operon. And uh, those which are located on the left side of the genome are the early uh, left uh, operon. And those which are expressed uh, towards the uh, end are the late operon. And uh, here you can see the location uh, of the uh, site specific uh, recombination and uh, the ATT sites as well as uh, the integrase and the Gs. So, these maps give us an idea that all these elements required for uh, site specific recombination are under the early uh, left uh, open. So, this is a, a magnified view of this diagram uh, showing the various components here as we have already discussed as well as the elements or sequences which are involved in the general uh, recombination. How does the first lambda uh, get uh, integrated? So, uh, or how does the excision uh, of the first lambda takes place. So, in the first case we can see the integration is happening and in the second case the excision is uh, occurring. So, tyrosine type fast integrase mediates site specific recombination. The ATT sites are recognized by fast uh, integrase. Core type binding sites containing the binding sites for the integrase in ATTP and ATTB and strand exchange occurs at a 7 base pair overlap region. Arm type binding sites in ATTB contain the binding sites for the integrase uh, ISF and XSINS. Let us now discuss about the bidirectional tyrosine type recombinases. You can see here the term causes recombination and the C and the R E re are combined together to form CRE. So, CRE is short form for causes recombination and this CRE is a recombination enzyme or recombinase enzyme from FAS P1. Similarly, the FLP is a short form from flippage and this is recombinase from the yeast 2 micron uh, plasmid cycle. Both of these catalyze reversible site specific recombination events between two short identical uh, sequences and these sequences are 34 base pairs log P sites for CRE and 48 base pairs FRT sites for uh, FLP. Strength exchange occurs in the 8 base pair regions, spatial regions and unlike others, these recombinations do not require host encoded accessory proteins, arm type binding sites or specific DNA structures. How does the recombination by tyrosine type recombinases occur? So, uh, in the first step, 4 recombinase monomers bind to the DNA substrates. So, uh, this is a DNA substrate here, another DNA substrate here and you can see here the monomers 1, 2, 3, 4 which together bind to the DNA substrates as uh, shown in the uh, picture. Two of these monomers are inactive. These yellow ones for example are inactive while two are active ok. You can notice here uh, phosphotyrosine in position in the uh, um, blue ovals uh, here uh, which is appearing little bit greyish. The active monomers 
cleave the first pair of DNA strands to form a 3J phosphotyrosyl intermediate and free 5J hydroxyl groups. Now, after these, there is a uh, strand exchange which results in holiday junction intermediate as you can see here and this is uh, followed by uh, isomerization. Now, there is a conformational change in the uh, next stage or a rotation takes place and the second pair of monomers which were earlier inactive now becomes uh, active and they carry out the second set of DNA cleavage. The second round of strand exchanges and ligations result in the recombinants. Now, you can see here a molecule, two different molecules, DNA molecules painted blue and red after the recombination process becomes a hybrid molecule as shown by these colors having both blue strand and the red strand and both the products are now recombinant products. Recombination by tyrosine type uh, recombinases. So, here the two strands binds here as already told to you and then uh, there is a strand exchange which forms the holiday junction and uh, this is the isomerization step which uh, we uh, could not uh, see in the earlier uh, pictures and finally, the second cleavage occurs and then finally, a recombinant DNA products are produced. So, this is basically as you can see a, a 5 step uh, procedure or 6 step procedure including the isomerization step. Cre and FLP recombination systems bear several important mechanistic similarities to the integrative recombination system of bacteriophage lemma and are members of the INT superfamily of site specific recombinases. One major characteristic shared by recombination systems in this group includes the formation of four stranded holiday junction uh, DNA intermediates. FLP is a site specific recombinase encoded by the 2 micron circle of the East Saccharomyces cerevisiae. It is thought to be responsible for maintaining multiple copies of these extra chromosomal elements in vivo. Here, Cre recombination system of the FAS1, uh, FAS P1 resolve tandem dimers of the P1 genome that form during replication, permitting the proper segregation of daughter FAS genomes at uh, cell division. Let us now discuss about the serine recombinases. The serine recombinases generally bind their individual crossover sites as dimers, but the strand exchange reaction uh, itself occurs within a tetramer. Double strand breaks are introduced by the attack of East promoter's active site serine on a sessile phosphate group leading to two nucleotide 3 prime overhangs. Two subunits are then hypothesized to rotate 180 degree relative to the each others aligning the cleave DNA ends with uh, new partners. The re-ligation reaction is chemically the reverse of the cleavage reaction with the 3 prime hydroxyl groups attacking the phosphoserine uh, linkages. Uh, you can see here the serine type recombination catalyzed uh, uh, reaction. So, uh, you have uh, 4 uh, uh, units and they are similarly binding uh, 2 different uh, DNA molecules and then two of these are on the top and bottom and they bind to uh, separate DNA strands. Each hydroxyl group of uh, catalyzing serine residue in all four recombinase molecules acts as a uh, nucleophile and it attacks the substrate DNAs and forms 5 prime uh, phosphoserine uh, linkages as shown over. Uh, here and then ligation uh, and rotation uh, takes place and then uh, the products are uh, formed. Two of the four recombinase uh, molecules that are covalently linked to different substrate DNAs rotate 
you can see here there is a rotation. So, these one of these blue has moved up uh, while uh, the pink color unit has uh, come down. The DNA is rotated with respect to the other pair of the recombinases and re ligate their attached 5 prime phosphates to the 3 prime of the unrotated uh, DNA. So, this is a uh, little bit different from the earlier case. Uh, here, they, there is no any uh, formation of the uh, holiday junction. Same resolvases are site specific recombinases that carry out excision reaction and resolve large fused replicants into smaller separated ones. Some resolvases are encoded by replicative transposons and resolve the transposition product in which the donor and recipient molecules are fused into separate replicants. Other resolvases are encoded by plasmids and function to resolve plasmid dimers into monomers. Both types are therefore involved in the spread and maintenance of antibiotic resistant genes. Seen is a resolvase of the serine recombinase family that is encoded by uh, uh, various uh, Staphylococcus aureus multi resistance uh, plasmids. The what are the biological roles of resolvases? Uh, gamma delta and TN3 resolvases are encoded by uh, replicative uh, transposons. Transposition creates a branched intermediate. This is processed by the host replication and repair machinery to yield a co intrigate in which both the donor and recipient replications are replicants are fused. Finally, resolvase action at a rest site within the transposal transposon resolves the co intrigate into the original donor and the recipient carrying a copy of the transposon. Resolvases like beta and cn are encoded by plasmids. Rescue of a stalled replication fork by a homologous recombination mediate pathway can lead to a holiday junction behind the rescued fork. In this diagram, you can see homologous recombination of a co intrigate plasmid containing the T3, TN3 transposon. This is an important part of the replication of this transposon, which itself has a role of the spread of antibiotic resistant genes. Let us see the structure of a scene tetramer and uh, in the reaction pathway there are two inactive site 1 which bound and which are bound dimers and come together and form a catalytically active tetrameric species. DNA cleavage resulting in phosphoserine intermediates uh, is, is followed by 180 degree rotation of one rotating dimer relative to the other, then re ligation happens yielding the recombinant uh, products. Formation of the tetrameric species can be triggered by a accessory protein bound to regulatory sites on the DNA. Let us study about the biological roles of resolvases. Uh, gamma delta and TN3 resolvases are encoded by replicative transposons. Transposition creates a branched intermediate this is processed by the host replication and repair machinery to a yield a co intrigate in which both the donor and the recipient replications replicants are fused. Finally, resolvase action take place at a rest site with the transposon resolve uh, uh, within the transposon resolves the co intrigate into the original donor and recipient carrying a copy of the transposon. So, in this diagram, you can see the homologous recombination of a co intrigate uh, plasmid containing. Uh, TN3 transposon. This is an important part of the replication of this transposon, which itself has a role on the spread of antibiotic resistant genes. Resolvases like beta and sin are encoded by plasmids. Rescue of a stalled replication fork by a homologous recombination mediated pathway can lead to a holiday junction behind the uh, rescued uh, fork. Let us look into the uh, structure of a syn tetramer and the reaction uh, pathway. Uh, here, uh, there are two inactive uh, site 1 bound dimers which come together and form a uh, catalytically active uh, tetrameric species. So, this is uh, inactive and these are also inactive. When they come together, they form a catalytically active 
uh, tetrameric spaces. DNA cleavage resulting in uh, phosphosericin intermediates. This is followed by 180 degree rotation of one rotating dimer relative to the other and then re-ligation happens and it yields the uh, recombinant products. So, you can see here uh, the cleavage occurring and then uh, there is a 180 degree rotation. So, this uh, goes up while this uh, comes down over here and due to this rotation you can see here uh, the uh, differently colored uh, DNA molecule which represents a different DNA molecule is flipped and due to ligation it is joined with the other uh, DNA molecule. So, uh, this is one DNA molecule denoted by one color, this is another DNA molecule denoted by another color and here you can get a recombinant product as denoted by the presence of both the colored fragments of DNA and in, and in, in, in both the uh, products. Rest sites and topology of the synaptosome. Series in resolve basis has rest sites. Specific recognition uh, sequences around uh, 12 base pair each for individual resolve base subunits are shown as colored boxes. This green is for the uh, crossover site always an inverted repeat, uh, purple for accessory site that form direct repeats and yellow for accessory sites that form uh, inverted repeats. The recombinase dimers bound to the accessory sites are catalytically inactive and these sites always differ from the crossover site in the length of their central spacers and or relative orientation of their uh, half sites. So, site 1 is basically the crossover site and site 2 is the accessory or the uh, regulatory site and there is a site 3 as well uh, at the end of site 2. So, there are various examples uh, uh, for this particular uh, pattern uh, you have seen and beta. Uh, for the second type, uh, you have TN552, then for the third type, you have PARA and then T2501 uh, and the fourth type, uh, you have uh, TN3, gamma delta and uh, uh, TN21. The gamma delta uh, rest site. So, you have uh, site 1, uh, site 2 and uh, uh, site 3 as uh, shown earlier. The three binding sites for resolved dimers are indicated by 1, 2 and 3 with the open, open arrows representing the 12 uh, base pair resolves recognition uh, sequence. This L and R indicate the left and right halves of the three sites. So, for first site LNR, second site also LNR and third also LNR. The vertical arrows uh, show the crossover point uh, at site 1 uh, here. The distance between the centers of each binding site and the length of the intracite spaces are also uh, shown in this uh, figure around 53 base pairs here and 34.5 base pairs. What are the various application of site specific recombinases? Due to the simplicity in mechanism of deletion, insertion and inversion of the DNA sequences, different site specific recombinases have been applied to in vivo genome engineering. And in some of them, it has been used successfully to mediate knock in and uh, knock out. Uh, we will be discussing about the use of uh, some of these site specific recombinases in our later lectures uh, for producing knock in and knock out uh, organisms. Uh, 
and in a wide variety of heterologous genomes including those from bacteria to higher organisms. Thank you for your uh, patient hearing. Mm -hmm.